Good morning everyone. Welcome to this second lecture of module 6. In this lecture we will discuss mechanism of transesterification reaction that is mechanism of acid catalyzed transesterification reaction, mechanism of alkali catalyzed transesterification reaction followed by that we will discuss the different parameters that affects the biodiesel yield, purification of biodiesel, fuel characteristics and at the end we will practice one or two example on the concept of theoretical biodiesel yield or theoretical glycerol yield. If you recollect our discussion in the previous lecture we discussed about the esterification process that is also regarded as acid pretreatment step to lower the free fatty acid content followed by transesterification reaction of reduced FFA containing raw material. Transesterification is a traditional method used for the biodiesel production and transesterification it refers to the reaction of triglyceride commonly referred as triacylglycerol with alcohol in presence of catalyst and the commonly used catalyst for the transesterification reaction includes sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, sodium methoxide and potassium methoxide to produce biodiesel and that is also referred as fatty acid alkyl ester and glycerol. This following reaction it represents the transesterification reaction of triacyl glycerol that is TAG which reacts with alcohol in presence of catalyst to produce fatty acid alkyl esters and along with that this reaction also produces glycerol as a byproduct. And the catalyst used in this process it can be a homogeneous catalyst or heterogeneous catalyst including acid base or enzyme and the commonly used alcohol for this transesterification reaction includes methanol, ethanol and propanol. And this is general scheme for the transesterification reaction. However, if this transesterification reaction is carried out with any specific alcohol say for example with methanol then the reaction can be represented as follows triacylglycerol it reacts with methanol in presence of base catalyst or enzyme to produce fatty acid methyl ester and that is commonly termed as biodiesel along with this glycerol. So, here in this case these methyl groups are replaced here because the methanol is being used as a alcohol for this particular reaction. Similarly, if the reaction is carried out with ethanol, so accordingly this group will get replaced and that will be termed as fatty acid ethyl ester instead of the fatty acid methyl ester. And the stoichiometric reaction here it requires one mole of triglyceride that is triacyl glycerol and three moles of alcohol here that is methanol to produce three moles of FEM as I mentioned just now FEM is fatty acid methyl ester and if the ethanol is used as a alcohol then it will be fatty acid ethyl ester because here then here this methyl group will get replaced by the ethyl group. Along with this it also produces one mole of glycerol and this transesterification reaction as we can see here it is a reversible reaction and proceeds essentially by mixing the reactant. In general high molar ratio alcohol to triacylglycerol or triglyceride is employed to keep this equilibrium of the reaction towards the forward direction that means toward formation of this methyl ester. And this is mainly required because as you can see here this is a reversible reaction. So to keep this equilibrium of the reaction towards the forward direction that means toward the formation of the methyl ester. So, the alcohol need to be 
used in the excess quantity during the transesterification reaction. So, this mechanism of transesterification reaction as we can see here it consists of number of consecutive and reversible reaction and in this transesterification reaction the first step is the conversion of triglyceride to diglyceride followed by the conversion of diglyceride to monoglyceride and then monoglycerides converts into glycerol and during this conversion step it yields one molecule of ester per mole of glyceride at each step and this mechanism of transesterification reaction is a three step process in which as we discussed earlier the triglycerides converts to diglyceride and release one ester molecule. Say for example, here this is a triglyceride molecule reacts with alcohol in presence of catalyst to produce one molecule of ester and diglyceride. So, in this particular molecule if you see here the ester separates out here and then the methyl group of alcohol is getting attached to this ester molecule forming the fatty acid methyl ester and producing diglyceride molecule. And the second step involves the conversion of diglyceride to monoglyceride. In this case the diglyceride produced in step 1 reacts with alcohol to produce ester molecule and monoglyceride. Further this monoglyceride converts with alcohol in presence of catalyst to produce one ester molecule and glycerol. As we can see here these stepwise reactions are reversible reaction thus excess of alcohol is required during this particular reaction so that this equilibrium shifts toward the forward direction that is formation of the ester. And in the presence of excess alcohol this forward reaction is considered as the pseudo first order and the reversible reaction is second order reaction. So, after learning this mechanism of transesterification reaction let us discuss this mechanism of transesterification reaction with alkali catalyst. So, this alkali catalyzed transesterification reaction it proceeds faster than the acid catalyzed transesterification reaction and alcohol here form an alkoxide ion in the presence of alkali catalyst. And in the first step the attack of this alkoxide ion to the carbonyl carbon of the triglyceride molecule results in the formation of tetrahedral intermediate. And the second step it involves the transfer of the proton from alcohol to this tetrahedral intermediate and the formation of this alkoxide ion. And third step it involves the rearrangement of this tetrahedral intermediate to form an ester and diglyceride. And this is represented as a diglyceride molecule. And in the similar way the process converts diglyceride to monoglyceride and monoglyceride to glycerol. While the mechanism of acid catalyzed transesterification reaction indicates that the transesterification reaction it can be catalyzed by Bronsted acids preferably by sulfuric and sulfuric acids. And this catalyst it gives very high yield of alkyl ester but this reaction is relatively slow compared to that of the alkali catalyst transesterification reaction and require typically more than 3 hour of the reaction time to complete the transesterification process. In first step here the presence of acid catalyst 
द प्रोटोनेशन ऑफ कार्बोनिल ग्रुप ऑफ ट्राइग्लिसराइड लीड्स टू द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ कार्बो कैटाइन एंड इन द सेकेंड स्टेप द कार्बो कैटाइन आफ्टर अ न्यूक्लियोफिलिक अटैक ऑफ द अल्कोहोल प्रोड्यूसेस टेट्राइड्रल इंटरमीडिएट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर फॉर्म एंड इन द थर्ड स्टेप दिस इंटरमीडिएट्स इलिमिनेट्स डायग्लिसराइड एज वी हैव सीन इन द प्रीवियस स्लाइड टू फॉर्म एन ईस्टर एंड रीजनरेट द कैटालिस्ट so in the third step the regeneration of the catalyst takes place in case of the acid catalyst transesterification reaction and this mechanism it can be extended in the similar way to diglyceride and monoglyceride followed by conversion of monoglyceride to glycerol and fatty acid alkyl ester so after understanding about the mechanism of transesterification process with alkali and the acid catalyst let us discuss about the factors affecting the biodiesel process which includes free fatty acid content of the raw material water or we can say the moisture content of the feed material catalyst type and concentration molar ratio of alcohol reaction temperature reaction time and mixing rate the process of transesterification of the oily feedstock material is affected to a great extent due to ffa and the water content in case if the feedstock material has high ffa content then requirement of the base catalyst increases to neutralize the ffa ffa is nothing but the free fatty acid content in the feedstock material even in this transesterification process the triglyceride may undergo hydrolysis in presence of water the excess water which is present in the feed material to form free fatty acid so this is also one of the reaction which may occur in the transesterification process if the water content is high then this triglyceride may undergo hydrolysis process to form free fatty acids water also hinders the reaction by frothing and soap formation that results in increase in the viscosity of the reaction mixture and the soap form in this particular process consumes the catalyst and reduces its efficiency whereas the foam make the glycerol separation difficult from the rest of the reaction mixture therefore for the best conversion efficiency in alkali catalyzed reaction the oil should have acid value of less than 1 mg kvh per gram of oil sample or we can say the ffa should be below 0.5% and all other reactant which are used during the transesterification process should be anhydrous reactant and the water content should be maintained below 0.06 percent that is weight percent so these are some important point which need to be take into consideration while conducting alkali catalyst transesterification reaction so another important factor is catalyst type and its concentration in transesterification reaction different types of catalyst that is homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysts are used for attaining the maximum biodiesel yield and the catalyst used during this transesterification reaction includes alkali catalyst acid or enzyme and as we discussed earlier the alkali catalyst transesterification reaction are faster than the acid catalyzed transesterification reaction and although we know the acid catalyst reaction give very high yield of alkyl ester but the reaction rate is slow with acid catalyzed reaction and it typically takes more than 3 hours of reaction time to reach to completion acid catalyst work better with high ffa feed stock while base catalyst used for low ffa feed stock material 
So, among all these catalysts, alkali catalysts like sodium hydroxide, sodium methoxide, potassium hydroxide or potassium methoxide are the most effective catalysts for the biodiesel production. Apart from the catalyst type, the catalyst concentration or we normally term it as a catalyst loading is among the most influential parameter which affect the biodiesel yield. Therefore, the optimum catalyst concentration should be determined experimentally for attaining the maximum biodiesel yield and in case if the alkali catalyst concentration exceeds the optimum range, then it increases the soap formation and that ultimately lowers the yield of methyl ester. As represented in the following reaction, the methyl ester reacts with excess alkali present in the reaction mixture and produces soap and alcohol as product and this reaction commonly referred as saponification reaction or saponification process. For that reason, the optimum catalyst concentration need to be used during the alkali catalyzed transesterification process for attaining the maximum biodiesel yield. And this table here, it depicts the comparative analysis of different homogeneous and the heterogeneous catalysts that are used for the transesterification process. So, let us first compare the acid catalyst that is homogeneous acid catalyst that includes sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, phosphoric acid, organic sulfonic acid, etc. And the advantage of using this catalyst for the transcription reaction is improved catalysis process. However, the limitation associated with the use of this catalyst include corrosion of reactor and slower reaction rate. And this point we already discussed in one of the slide that the acid catalyst reactions are relatively slow compared to that of the alkali catalyzed transesterification reaction. However, the heterogeneous acid catalysts include Bronsted and Lewis acids. The advantage is easy separation of this catalyst from the reaction mixture and reusable. However, the limitation associated with the use of this catalyst includes expensive catalyst preparation procedure and also it required harsh reaction condition to achieve the maximum biodiesel yield. Compared to acid catalyst, the base catalyst transesterification reactions are more preferred in that the homogeneous base catalyst reactions are commonly being used for the biodiesel synthesis process which includes sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, sodium methoxide, potassium methoxide and other catalysts as well. So, advantage of using this catalyst includes higher rate of catalysis, non-corrosive in nature and easily available. However, the limitation of this catalyst as we discussed earlier, the use of this catalyst may result into the saponification reaction with high FFA containing feedstock and also it is non-reusable. However, the heterogeneous catalyst includes zeolites, hydrodalcides, metal oxides and carbonates like calcium oxide and calcium carbonate and the advantage associated with the use of this heterogeneous base catalyst include easy separation from the reaction mixture, hence it can be reused for the transesterification process and because of its reusability, the waste generation would be minimal. However, the limitation or the disadvantages associated with the use of this catalyst include costly process to synthesize this kind of catalyst 
as well as the leaching of actiocytes during the transesterification process. And the new class of catalysts which are being used for the transesterification reaction includes the heterogeneous nanocatalysts including nanoparticles of zinc oxide, calcium oxide, magnesium oxide and titanium dioxide as well as the nano hydrotalcides and nano zeolites. The advantage of this heterogeneous nanocatalyst includes the easy separation as well as easy recovery and its reusability, non-toxic and even cost effective. However, the limitation includes the lengthy catalyst synthesis process and this is the major limitation of use of this particular catalyst for the transesterification process. And the next class of catalyst is enzymes which includes the free lipase and immobilized lipase. In case of free lipase, the advantage is like it gives higher biodiesel yield. However, it has low catalytic activity and difficult recovery of the glycerol while in case of immobilized lipase it gives higher biodiesel yield even easy recovery of glycerol but lower catalytic activity. Considering all these limitations of the homogeneous and the heterogeneous catalyst, base catalyst that is alkali catalyst process are still widely being used for the biodiesel synthesis. Another important factor for the biodiesel synthesis includes the molar ratio of alcohol and this biodiesel yield is significantly affected by the alcohol to triglyceride molar ratio as we discussed in the previous slide as well. The molar ratio of alcohol to triglyceride is a crucial parameter in optimizing the biodiesel yield. Stoichiometrically, as we know in transesterification reaction, 1 mole of triglycerides required 3 mole of alcohol to produce 3 mole of fatty acid esters and 1 mole of glycerol. However, as we know the transesterification reaction is a reversible reaction, so in which excess alcohol is required to drive this transesterification reaction to forward direction that is to the right that is toward the formation of fatty acid methyl ester. With increasing this alcohol to oil ratio the purity and the yield of biodiesel also increases but up to certain level. For example, if alkali catalyst reaction requires approximately 6 is to 1 molar ratio of methanol to oil for optimal biodiesel yield that is close to 98 percent. Now, if this molar ratio is increased beyond say the optimum range then there will be no further increase in the biodiesel yield. However, this high alcohol concentration it may increase the solubility of the glycerin which interfere its separation during the reaction. Because as we know this glycerin is soluble in the alcohol. So, with increasing concentration of alcohol it increases the solubility of the glycerin and then it interferes its separation during the reaction. Moreover, if the glycerin remains in the solution it drives this equilibrium to the left and lower the yield of ester. So, rather than driving this equilibrium towards the right this excess alcohol concentration because of this increasing solubility of the glycerin will drive this equilibrium towards the left and it eventually results in lowering the yield of the esters. For that reason the optimum range of alcohol to triglyceride molar ratio need to be maintained in the transesterification process. Even this type of alcohol it also affects the biodiesel yield because this methanol and ethanol are not miscible with triglyceride at ambient temperature and because of that the reaction mixture need to be heated 
and stirred continuously to enhance the mass transfer between these two phases and even the emulsions are formed during this particular process. As we know the methanol forms unstable emulsion which can easily be broken down to separate the glycerol from methyl ester. However, in case of the ethanol it forms more stable emulsion during the transesterification reaction then it severely complicates the separation and purification of esters. And this stabilization of emulsion in case of ethanol is mainly due to the large nonpolar group in ethanol relative to methanol. And also the base catalyzed formation of ethyl ester is quite difficult compared to the formation of the methyl ester. And because of this reason the methanol is the most widely used alcohol or we can say the most preferred alcohol for the transesterification reaction. Similarly, this reaction temperature also it greatly affect the ester yield and the reaction rate with increasing the temperature the viscosity of the oil decreases which results in the higher reaction rate. Generally, the temperature it should be maintained below the boiling point of the alcohol which is being used for the transesterification process and the range of optimum temperature is 50 to 60 degree Celsius and it also depends on the type of oils and the fats being used for the transesterification process. In case if the temperature increase beyond this optimum range then the saponification rate will be accelerated and thereby reducing the ester yield. Moreover, the evaporation rate of the alcohol will be increased and leading to the loss of alcohol and because of this reason the optimum temperature range of 50 to 60 degree Celsius need to be maintained during the transesterification process to avoid the loss of alcohol as well as to reduce the chances of saponification reaction. Similarly, the reaction time is also one of the crucial factors during this transesterification reaction. Usually with reaction time there is an increase in the transesterification rate. Initially the reaction rate remains slow and that is mainly due to the mixing and the dispersion of alcohol in the oil phase. And as the mixing completes then the reaction proceeds very fast. However, as the formation of the methyl ester reach the maximum level or value then it lowers the reaction rate. Therefore, allowing this sufficient time duration is a critical step for the transesterification reaction. If enough time is not given then what will happen is like the oil remains unreacted and ultimately decreases the ester yield. In case if the time duration exceeds the reaction time then the end product is affected leading to the soap formation as we discuss this formation of soap with increasing the temperature in the previous slide as well. Similarly, with increasing the reaction time the end product will get affected and may lead to the formation of the soap. Hence, the reaction time may differ from substrate to substrate and it mainly depends on the type and the quality of the feedstock which is used for the transesterification process. For example, in case of soybean oil the optimum conversion of soybean oil to ester can be achieved within less than 90 minutes. However, in some cases if the oil contains high amount of FFA as well as the impurities then the duration of the reaction may get extended. Similarly, the agitation and the mixing of the reaction mixture. Since oils and fats are immiscible with catalyst and alcohol solution say for example, if the catalyst used is sodium hydroxide and the alcohol used is methanol then oil or fats are immiscible with this sodium hydroxide methanol solution. Therefore, for transesterification reaction 
agitation or mixing is mandatory and once these two phases are mixed and the reaction is started then the effect of stirring is insignificant. Apart from that the agitation and the mixing speed also has an important role for the end product formation that is biodiesel formation. Lower stirring speed causes lower ester yield and higher stirring speed leads to the soap formation. In case of the stirring speed beyond the optimum range, the reaction time is the controlling factor in determining the ester yield. So, the next important topic is the separation and the purification of the prepared biodiesel. So, this schematic here it represents the process arrangement of biodiesel production using two step approach which includes acid catalyzed pre esterification followed by the base catalyzed trans esterification reaction to convert the FFA and triacylglycerol into esters. At the end of the esterification process the product is purified by removing the water and the other impurities and the resultant mixture is transesterified to convert into the ester and the product mixture is allowed to separate crude biodiesel from the methanol and glycerol phase followed by its purification. So, the glycerol which is obtained at the bottom can be purified to obtain methanol and pure glycerin and the crude biodiesel that is the top layer in the separation vessel can be purified to produce biodiesel and waste. During the separation of the crude biodiesel from the methanol and the glycerol phase, the separation of the catalyst from the whole product is important because the solid catalyst first need to be collected from the reaction suspension by filtration or the centrifugation technique. A part of the catalyst may lost by leaching into the both ester and alcoholic phase and this collected solid catalyst can be reused with or without regeneration or may be disposed properly. And this separation of catalyst from the whole product is part of the discussion when the heterogeneous catalyst is used during the transesterification process. Followed by the separation of crude biodiesel from glycerol alcohol phase, the fatty acid methyl ester and glycerol alcohol phase has a large density difference and thus this phase separation by gravitational settling is relatively fast and most commonly used technique to separate the fatty acid methyl ester from glycerol alcohol phase. Alternatively, centrifuge is used more effectively for the separation at large scale biodiesel production. However, the limitation of this separation technique is this separation process does not completely remove glycerol and methanol from the crude biodiesel and some fraction of glycerol and methanol may be observed in the biodiesel. Followed by that is the recovery of the methanol. So, this methanol is recovered from the crude biodiesel by evaporation vacuum flash vaporization or stripping operation. So, the removal of the ethanol is most crucial and the important step in the purification of the biodiesel since excess amount of the alcohol is used during the transesterification process. So, the excess alcohol need to be removed from the crude biodiesel so that it can be reused in the transesterification process. 
followed by the removal of impurities from the crude biodiesel since crude biodiesel contains many impurities which are removed by the water washing or water free agent example resins so sometimes these resins are used to remove impurities present in the crude biodiesel to avoid the water washing step water washing is employed to remove water soluble impurities such as residual methanol and glycerol and the waste water generated during this purification step is gravitationally separated from the biodiesel and this water must be adequately treated before reuse or may be disposed of following the waste water treatment process and the last operation in the purification of the biodiesel is a drying of biodiesel finally the biodiesel is dried by flash or the thin film evaporation commonly under vacuum or by absorption onto appropriate adsorbent material followed by the filtration so that the trace amount of the impurities remains in the biodiesel can be separate out during this filtration operation and this table here it depicts the fuel characteristics of different biodiesel blends as per the standard specified by ASTM this biodiesel it can be blended and used in many different concentration and the most common is b5 that is up to 5% biodiesel and b20 that is 6 to 20% biodiesel and this b100 that is termed as a pure biodiesel is typically used as a blend stock to produce lower percentages blends and is rarely used as a transportation fuel and this table here it provides the fuel characteristics of these different blends along with its ranges so after learning about this transesterification process and its mechanism as well as the parameters which affect the transesterification process let us try to solve one example to calculate the maximum biodiesel yield so in this example the transesterification of 100 pound of oil using 10 pound of methanol yields about 100 pound of biodiesel and 10 pound of glycerol so we need to verify this transesterification reaction of olive oil which is represented by this formula here and we have to also verify that it agrees with the claim made in this example about the biodiesel yield as it is mentioned here 100 pound of oil gives around 100 pound of biodiesel so this claim need to be verified with the help of transesterification of the olive oil so let us begin with this solution so the olive oil is represented as c17 h33 c00 C3H5 plus methanol undergoes transesterification process to produce 3 moles of ester that is methyl ester since methanol is used as a alcohol for the transesterification process and produces 1 mole of glycerol so as per the mole balance one mole of triglyceride reacts with 3 moles of alcohol that is methanol produces 3 moles of ester and 1 mole of 
glycerol so the molecular weight of this molecule it is 884 molecular weight of this molecule as for olive oil it is 884 for methanol that is 96 as 3 moles of methanol are used and 296 into 3 moles of ester gives and the glycerol is 92 so the mass balance for 100 kg of oil so we need to find out the amount of alcohol ester and the glycerol produce during this process given in this example is mass of oil is 100 kg now if we need to calculate the mass of fatty acid methyl ester so it is simply by 884 into 100 kg oil sample so it gives so the methyl ester produced during this reaction is around 100.45 kg similarly methanol is equals to 10.86 kg and glycerol equals to 10.41 kg and these values indicates that the claim made in this example is substantially correct since 100 kg of oil is giving 100.45 kg biodiesel and 10.41 kg glycerol and that was the claim made in this example also that 100 pound of oil using 10 pound of methanol yields 100 pound of biodiesel and 10 pound of glycerol so let us try to solve another example where we need to calculate the theoretical amount of biodiesel and the glycerol produced during the transesterification process and considering the triacyl glycerol as triesterene so in this case the kg of oil sample having 93% triglyceride and is transesterified using methanol and koh as catalyst so with the help of this given information we have to just calculate the theoretical amount of the biodiesel and the glycerol produced during this transesterification of triesterene so here given data is 1 kg that is 1000 g of oil sample having 93% triglyceride that is triacyl glycerol does triestrine Ninety-three percent of one thousand gram of oil gives point 
पॉइंट नाइन थ्री इंटू वन थाउजेंड दैट इज इक्वल टू नाइन थर्टी ग्राम सो नो द मोल्स ऑफ ट्रैस्टरीन इक्वल टू गिवन मास बाय मोलार मास सो हियर इट इज नाइन थर्टी ग्रैम डिवाइडेड बाय एट नाइंटी वन फाइव ग्राम पर मोल दैट कम्स आउट टू बी अराउंड वन पॉइंट जीरो फोर थ्री मोल नाउ सपोज दिस ट्रायस्टरीन reacts with 3 moles of methanol produces 3 moles of ester and glycerol so this is triesterin methanol and this is methyl stearate and this is glycerol so from this stoichiometry now one mole of triesterin react with 3 mole of methanol to produce 3 mole of methyl stearate and one mole of glycerol so therefore 1.043 mole of triesterene produce around 3. One to nine mole of methyl stearate and one point zero four three mole of glycerin or glycerol. One point zero four three mole of glycerol. now suppose if you have to calculate this mass of methyl stearate then it will be moles into molar mass 
that is 3.129 into 298.5 and it comes out to be around 934.0 gram. Similarly, mass of glycerol produce equal to moles into molar mass that is 1.043 into 92.1 that is gram by mole and this is in gram so it comes out to be around 96.1 gram therefore one kg of oil containing 93% of triesterene produce around 934 gram of biodiesel and 96.1 gram of glycerol and this is stoichiometric or you can say the theoretical yield of biodiesel. This is all about the biodiesel process or we can say the transesterification process and you can refer to these references for the additional information. So, the next lecture that is third lecture of the module 6 will discuss green diesel synthesis from the biobased feedstock and their application. Thank you.